four, three, two, one. We are live, everybody. Wow. I think we're live. Wow, <laughs> we are. This is 2OF Entertainment. The Habana Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment, with over 100,000 YouTube subscribers and rapidly growing to be the most watched and podcast cigar show broadcast globally. The Habana Cigars Dinner and Drink Show, exclusively on 2OF Entertainment. I think that's my cigar smoker, Eve Hello. Hey, we're live. <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> no, why is that? Now that you are at TomTom. Tom, yes. Now that you are I'm at TomTom. Tom. Tom. And just to set the scene, I'll give you guys a little bit of a, a loungy kind of feel. Nice. At TomTom. Tom. You can see your private member's lounge. There we go. Very nice. And I'm smoking the Monte Cristo um, Leander. Okay. And I'm sitting here with the general manager, Christian, who is smoking one hell of a cigar. Christian, what are you smoking? How are you, everyone? Um, smoking the EGM Yadema. Hi. Yadema. Yadema. Beautiful Vitola. Wow. Very nice. It is. So you're, really, is you're really doing it, right? It you're really doing it, right, Dave? We're just, we're just schlepping. I mean, I'm here in a truck, <laughs> so I don't know how bad that can be. But I'm smoking for, because David was having a heart attack. Uh, the Pig T52 by Drew Estates. It's a beauty. Nice cigar. It's, I'm trying to keep up with Christian and have a big long one. So and, and I'm talking about cigars. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So we have that going on there. And then, uh, Uzman, what are you smoking today? Well, I'm smoking a uh, Kedorse 50, and I just cut it with an amazing gift that was sent to me by Christian. And now I'm going to light oh, it up nice. with... The Tom Tom. With the Tom Tom lighter. Oh, gosh. Very nice. Yes, sir. Yeah, Christian doesn't send me gifts. So I have to light it with just a normal Shuffley lighter. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but the good thing is, so today before we start the show, I'm going to talk about our favorite cigar um, experiences that we've had, you know, smoking cigars. Our Samone, if his internet connection from Pakistan and the satellite and the gerbils go well, is going to give us, tell us the five myths about cigars that are just not true. So that's the, that's your, that's the, what you get to learn about cigars today. So what are the five myths of cigars that are not true? Right. So shall we <laughs> dig into them? Yes, you, you should. You're the Samane. We just sit here and look pretty now. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, thank you very much uh, for the show and, and allowing me to be the one to blast in the first 15 minutes. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. So the first and the most famous cigar myth. In Cuba, the cigars are rolled on the thighs of virgin Cubans. They're not? That is No. That is no. far from the reality, not backed by facts ever. And and I don't know which which versions when it was, but you can see a lot of males and females working in the uh, industry, door to door and all but, that stuff. But there's Maybe, vir there's virgin males. There's virgin males, so it could still be rolled on the virgin thighs. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh shit, man. Absolutely not true. I'm not going there at all. I think Stephen started that rumor. Yeah, it looks like it. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the myth number two, one of those very important ones. Cigars can easily be preserved in refrigerators. Do not do that ever to your cigars, putting them into the refrigerators because the refrigeration process, yes, provides them with a cooler temperature, but it completely dries them out. The humidity is gone out and they become brittle and non-smokable because it is always relative humidity. And because of the compressor, uh, the aeration and, and the humidity is taken off them. So please do not use the uh, refrigerator as one of your uh, storage places for your cigars. A very interesting 
theme or a very interesting myth uh, about cigars is that, oh, it is the Cuban seed. Normally referred to in the New World cigars, it's a Cuban seed, absolutely equal quality and all that stuff. Yes, it might have been the case that you've gotten hands on Cuban seed or you are from a migrant family or whatever. And I'm not contradicting your authenticity on that. But the fact that that seed has not been sown in Cuba can never possess the quality that leaf is going to get or a plant is to get through that soil or through that environment or through that weather. So, so, so it can't be that this is this is uh, uh, equal in terms of its quality and standards and care and all that stuff that Cuba does it. Another myth, uh, which is very interesting, is the the Maduros are stronger. Uh, well, I'm I'm yet to see what's the truth about that. Maduros are generally. L- Intimidating when it comes to the color, they look uh, of wrapper color. That these are stronger cigars. Uh, point being, the Cohiba Maduros, uh, Secretos, Maicos, or Ineos, to me, are not as strong as a lot of other uh, stronger brands, or which are not the Cuban wrappers, or, or not sorry, the Maduro wrappers, but still very stronger cigars. Very, very interesting uh, concept is that while you cut the cigar and before you light it up, lick the cigar and make it wet because that will allow more and better uh, smoke and all of that. To me, personally, it is gross. Uh, I would (laughs) prefer smoking a cigar as dry as it could be. Because I want to enjoy the aroma and profile of the cigar rather than blocking it with so much of humidity and uh, moistness that is coming out of your saliva. Uh, and, 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 and personally, ugly looking when you see it. A very interesting myth, uh, which is also considered uh, in, in, in this case, is that the cigars... Uh, okay. Yeah, so so the cigars uh, should be kept in only cedar wood, or the humidors should be cedar wood uh, or, or Spanish cedar. Well, there is no f- technical reasoning or science, as we explained in the first. Uh, it was convenience and the fact that Spanish. For a long time, it was easier to get hold of Spanish cedar. As long as you have cedar wood from anywhere in the world or something wood which does not and, and or leaves its own aroma or oils, that is fine. These days, the Tupperware or the acrylic humidors are also very much in use from that perspective. Last but not I think we're having I think we're having problems from Pakistan, everybody. But that's okay. We'll bring them. No, Usman will be back here in a second. Moistness. So yeah, Usman, we're losing we're losing we you. Buddy. Do, we're sorry. We can do one. We can do one thing. Yeah. We can start off with a cigar story. We can start up, but those were good though. He got four or five myths dispelled, but and I, once his I, internet gets better, we'll, we'll I, do better. They're very very useful. In fact, we were comparing notes. Christian and I were comparing notes. He's on the mark. Yeah. Uh, Usman yep. is on a mark. Can I kick off with my cigar story since I've got Christian sitting here? Well, we figured, you know, you're trying to show off. So, yes, sir, yeah, you sure. have to. So. <laughs> so, my cigar story is, is going to happen in real time. <laughs> I'm smoking the uh, Monte Cristo Leander, which Christian dug out for me today from the Tom Tom uh, humidor upstairs. And now Christian is going to show me a very special lighter. Ooh, here we go. So, here is closer. a cigar story. Okay. So let's have a look. What is this? The line two from ST Dupont is called the Monte Cristo Crepuscolo. Uh, so let's go for the claim. Very beautiful. I think uh, you can make a louder claim than that. Go for it, Christian. Throw it out there. There you go. 
There you go. That's a beautiful lighter. That's a beautiful lighter. Can we get a close up of it? I you have you've been I've been a close up of it the whole time. There we go. Look at that. That's gorgeous. And so there you go. Fortunately, since I'm smoking this, he tied it up with a Monte Cristo lighter. Let me have a clean. Hang on. Uh, oh God. Like a little child now. He's, yes, the master of the clean. Hmm. All right. That was with very nice. Ponts, I like that. With the DuPonts, you have to kind of throw it out there. We were discussing DuPont lighters just now, the technicalities behind them, what makes them clean, right. is it the metal, is there a magic clip on the inside? Right, right. So it, let's, let's tackle a cigar story and a myth at the same time. Sure. And the myth is, there is, um, it's very, very hard to see. I'll show you in this particular lighter. There's a clip on the inside. I don't know if you can actually see it. There's actually a clip on the inside. Now, a lot of people think it's that clip on the inside that makes the lighter cling. It's not that clip, actually. And I think this is pretty good insight. That clip is just there to suppress the head inside of the lighter so it doesn't release gas. If you remove oh, yeah. the clip, it will still go cling. But that clip is in essential to keeping the gas inside the lighter when you shut the, the case. So nice. there are a lot of uh, people these days collecting these ST DuPont lighters. I think, in fact, Christian and I were discussing this in the last two or three years, especially people are buying these lighters left, right and center. They co they're almost collecting them like cards. Uh, they want the Monte Cristo, the Trinidad. They want the, right. um, the, Cohiba. the Cohiba, obviously. Um, and then th they do specialist um uh, uh, versions like this one. Mine's Joker, which I, I, I tout at every occasion. So they do a card right. series. Joker, the King, the Queen, etc., etc. So people have been collecting them quite a, a lot more recently. And SD DuPont has become very, very good these days at releasing new special colorful editions with a cigar, matching cigar case, matching cutter. So my cigar story or if, uh, if you feel like, is recently, in the last two or three years, I've only got interested in these lighters. And pretty much, we are kind of, I think we're a little bit agreed. There are other companies making lighters, but ultimately, I mean, Dunhill's been making them for no, no end right. of time. Uh, Ellie Bleu make them. Uh, Colibri, which is an Italian company based in New York, they make some fairly decent lighters. But the ones that everyone really wants are these DuPonts. So shout out to yes. DuPont. You guys are doing a fabulous job. Uh, you're producing great, great lighters, but keep the cling going because it was always about that cling, which I think they yes. marketed and, and, and copyrighted a long while ago. So they also do lots of lighters that don't cling, which are the, um, which, which ones are they? The Legrands. Legrand. The Legrands. But Legrand. okay. we like the ones, the Linear 2 specifically, that have that, mag you know, when you're sitting in a, in a, in a, whether it's a full cigar lounge or an empty cigar lounge, the, the, the flex is to go cling and let the whole room hear that you just you just uh, lit a SD DuPont and you're lighting right, a right. cigar. So my cigar story kind of circulates around one of my favorite accessories. Um, we showed off a brand new one with Christian just now, the Monte Cristo, which is sitting on the table where we've got a table full of cigars uh, and accessories. And right. and if you don't mind, let me show you one more accessory that Christian just uh, pulled out of the bag. It's an, it's yeah. an old accessory, but... This is a very, very special. Is it a it's ceramic? Titanium and ceramic. Titan, titanium and ceramic cigar cutter, which you can nice. hear has almost no sound. And this one cuts cigars like butter. Um, it avoids fraying the cigar or damaging the cigar. And I had a go at cutting the, um, the cigar that Krishna is smoking right now, the EGM Diadamis, right? Yeah. Right. And it just... Yeah, uh, didn't hear anything. It, it it just you know, it is a proper Moyles cigar cutter. I was just gonna say my Moyle has that, but he doesn't use it on cigars. <laughs> so, yeah, sure. Painless, pain a painless transaction. A painless snip. You get ten percent. That's how That's it works. Yeah, sometimes a little extra. A little, if you know, it depends how big. <laughs> so yeah, but that's very nice. So so now. So this week, we're going to talk about our favorite cigar story. So now you've done the promotion, um, mm -hmm. non-paid advertising for Tom Tom, for mm -hmm. ST DuPont, for the Snipper, for all the cigar lighters in the world. So what's your favorite cigar story 
that you have? I mean, I have so many of them, and I and I was thinking through, thinking these through. Um, cigar stories relate to, to me around obviously something that's memorable. I'll give right, you right. my cigar story. It's a very personal cigar story. It's almost the reason I started smoking cigars, um, which was very much to, due to my father, who was an avid cigar smoker. And he would have been a cigar smoker throughout the mid, sorry, even the early 80s, all the way through the 90s. Um, he passed away in 2000. And when I used to get picked up from school, on a Saturday afternoon. My school used to also run throughout the week and also Saturday morning on a Saturday afternoon around midday. My father would turn up in his car to pick me up smoking a cigar. Nice. And my fun part of the weekend would start with the smell of cigars. Uh, my father used to drive a Mercedes with leather seats and the aroma of cigars right, right. and getting into a leather seat and knowing that my weekend is starting is basically the most personal cigar story, memorable cigar story that I can tell mm -hmm. anyone, really. It's something I don't talk about too much because it is so personal. But it is the reason I started smoking cigars because to this day, not every cigar, but if I'm smoking on my own and I light a cigar... I'm actually right, capturing right. aroma and I'm capturing a memory through those aromas. And um, even so much so, I am less marginally less interested in the flavor of a cigar. I'm more interested in the aroma that it generates. And so when I'm smoking on my own, maybe at home, I'll close the windows for a little while to marinate in that cigar smell. And it just takes me to a very, very happy place where there's the smell of cigars, maybe some nice cologne, uh, uh, some leather, which is why, I mean, uh, it's, it's not a coincidence that if you go into a great cigar lounge, I mean, like this one, right. the seats are leather, and there's that slight mustiness, that old library kind of feel. And right. here, you know, at TomTom, Tom, even more so, they've, if you can see, they've got a little library section. It's, it's sort of evocative of very old world living. And right. it's um, sort of a, a time traveling kind of exercise. So I shared with you probably my most intimate personal cigar story ever is my father smoking a cigar. And oh, it's really cool. particularly an amazing cigar. But I recall he used to smoke in the 80s. He was smoking Monte Cristos and Romeo y Giulietta's. And yeah. you could get them pretty much in, in London. You could get them pretty much at any tobacconist. You, you didn't have to necessarily go to a a specialist cigar merchant, although I'm sure he, he went. And I, I recall in the late 80s, I even went with him to Davidoff a couple of times, which, which is in St. James's of London, which at that time was like, uh, even even now, but it's a very sort of prestigious place. But uh, yeah, uh, if, if you're going to ask me, all roads lead back to my father when it comes to cigars. Nice. And... Um, so, as you can see, for the first time, I'm giving you a very serious. <laughs> I see that. That's a, yeah. We've never we've never had that. Well, I was going to say when you mentioned all the leather, I got excited because I thought you were going to go to Hilgo's House of Pain. So I was like, oh, I that's a good place for cigars. But you know, you you did a different thing. It was very nice. That's very nice. Let me let me. I'm going to do mine, and then if Usman's connection and the Pakistani government doesn't take him out again, <laughs> he'll do his. But and then Christian can do his if he would like. Do you have but, a cigar story? Do you have a cigar story, Christian? Let him think it up. Let him think it up. Okay. <laughs> and then make one up, Christian, with like a movie star or something. No one will know. Um, so mine, it goes to my grandfather. And my grandfather used to smoke cigars all the time. So when we would go there for dinner, he would have a cigar. When we when I was a kid, all the time, cigars, cigars, cigars. And I remember when I graduated university, he said, You're a man now. And I'm thinking, I was a man at 13, according to Jewish law, but okay, I'm a man now. So he took us out after graduation to a steakhouse. And this is in the day where you could smoke a cigar at a steakhouse. I had my first scotch. I had my first cigar. And that was my, so every time I have a cigar, I always think of my grandfather because that was his way of, you know, congratulating you into manhood. Um, and back then, um, he belonged to a private club, a gentleman's club, but not like you think today with strippers, but a gentleman's club to kind of like your Tom Tom. 
with the leather couches and the leather this and the le- and you would and I got to go to there and smoke cigars with like the old guard, and it was just fascinating um, to do that. So yeah, so when I light a cigar, I always that is my first thing that I always think of is my grandfather. So because he's the one that got me, it's his fault that I have this habit <laughs> of scotch and cigars, and wouldn't change it for the world. So, and according to my man, doctor, very personal, and, 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 right? Thing. And according to my doctor, when I go for my annual, because he tells me how bad drinking and smoking is, apparently I'm the healthiest patient he has, regardless if you're 20 years old or 120. And he keeps saying, why are you have no stress? Well, I go, because one, I give stress. And two, scotch and cigars. That's like I'm, it's my three-hour mini holiday every day. It's just I don't care. We're all good. I think, I, I, I think, I, I think the, the leaves impart a certain leatheriness to the skin and to the mm. internal organs that lets them sort of persevere a little bit longer. I agree. Well, look George, at Churchill. He George, lived to be George, 90. George Burns. George Burns. Uh, 100 years uh, old. Fa- famously smoking 25, 30 cigars a day. Yeah. I, I, I saw an interview where he said that he will smoke a whole box of cigars, which I, I don't know how anyone does that's, that, but he did. It's crazy. And yeah. uh, in, inverse logic lasted longer. Yeah. I, I truly believe... It's cigars that it's not a gateway to anything, but it is very much, it's a, ref, it's a time of reflection. And when you it's have that time, it, yeah, and it helps you just to chill out. And so all the stress of the world goes away. Everything is fine. Everything. It's all good. So, you know, like if there's a, we're doing a deal and I'm stressed about something, I go outside, I light a cigar. It could be two in the afternoon or two in the morning. It's all good. And get to think through things. It's just a calming. It's a beauty. On that note, I'm going to give you a first. Mm. The UK government uh, about a week ago announced uh, that it is very much seriously considering banning smoking outdoors. Um, they're not including cigars. They're saying cigars are wonderful for you, and uh, everyone should smoke a cigar outdoors. Well, I finally agree with something the UK has done. Oh, there you go. And then, and then I have two more stories, but I'm going to do this after Usman. Usman, you seem to have a connection. Whoever you paid off in Pakistan or you fed the gerbil, go for it. <laughs> or not. Oh, no. <laughs> we, have just a, we just have a picture. We just have a picture of Usman now. We don't even have him anymore. Usman, <laughs> can you hear us? There you go. Speak to us, so oh great wise one. Hello. I, I hear... I, I, I I hear someone I hear someone was talking about taking my name. What do you guys want me to do now? Your cigar Tell story. Tell us a cigar mate. story. What's your cigar story? Oh, uh, finally we've gotten that. I'm sorry. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, we're I'm losing him again. Usman is on hiatus today. Absolutely crap internet today. I see that. I see that. I, he's just going to sit there and look pretty with the Cuban car in the background, I guess, unfortunately. And, he's, and, and his stories are going to be great because we've heard them before off air. So well, well, this you got to get him get a, in there. This in itself is a cigar story. Three people talking about cigar stories, one person unable to. So Usman mm. will remember this for a while because it's all on digital format. Mm. And it's live. So all the Pakistani government guys that watch the show now are going to be upset. They're going to have to get his internet better. How's your cigar, by the way, Christian? It's excellent. It's uh, not developing so much, but it's a good test, if you, even if it's a New World Where is, It's a New World cigar, but from what part of the New World? Oh, okay. Is it Dominican? Dominican Republic. Dominican Leaf. Yeah. Okay. I have a feeling, I have a feeling, I have been to the factory where this cigar is rolled in, um, in Santiago uh, mm. a couple of years ago, at least. So uh, I... I'm going to guess that I know what that cigar is like. It's probably relatively okay, relatively smooth. Um, I would say perhaps not as complex as a Habanos cigar, but that's a matter of opinion. It's all subjective. Actually, actually, Christian earlier on today said to me that in Cuba, they only have two ratings for cigars. Really? Uh, Christian, what are they? That's what people they say over there. They say... Either a cigar is good or bad, so it's bueno or malo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's true. That's a that's a cigar. It's either good, or, like this, cigar like this pig, a cigar. <laughs> right? But like the pig that I'm smoking, it's very nice. I can taste absolutely nothing. I mean, that's also because I had like you know um, 
some Japanese whiskey with it. But anyway, I can taste nothing, but the smoke is great and the aroma is beautiful. So when the guys in America are telling me about New World cigars and they taste everything, I'm like, is that because you just had the chocolate bar? Because I'm not tasting anything. Well, well, um, I, I go to the Arnold Schwarzenegger school when it comes to New World cigars, dip them in tequila, mm, and you've got mm, a cigar that's at least three times better. Mm. Yeah, but he smokes on the, I think he smokes the punch. And the Monte Carlo or Monte Cristo Cubans, if I'm not mistaken, he's a punch guy. I didn't know this. Did you know this, Christian? Oh, oh yeah, no, no. No, there we go. Yeah, That's Arnold's nice. a punch guy. As as far as I know, I saw an interview with him, um, and he was smoking. He goes, he loves punch. And I was like, interesting. So I'm not sure if they're the Cuban version or the New World version, but I know he likes his punch cigars. Are there New World punches? Yeah, as well. I guess it was a double Corona then. The yes. Punch. Big cigars. Yeah. Big yeah, yeah. He likes his he likes his punches, and I thought that was interesting. I have a a, a cigar story, but I wasn't there. I was told by Mel Brooks about Alfred Hitchcock. Yep. And this is one of my favorite stories. So they just Mel Brooks just got done doing High Anxiety, and he, Alfred Hitchcock took him to dinner, and he said they went to dinner, and he was like. I would like to have my shrimp cocktail. So Alfred Hitchcock has his shrimp cocktail. He has his, um, his entree, his, he has his sides and he has his dessert and he pulls his cigar from his jacket or his, and he's about, and just before he cuts it, he looks at Mel Brooks and he says, you know, I feel a little peckish. He puts the cigar back in his jacket in the carrying case. And George, the maitre d' comes over and goes, George, again. And again, the shrimp, the entree, the desserts. And then he lit his cigar after two meals. And to me, that is, and Mel Brooks tells it much better. But to me, that is one of the best Alfred Hitchcocks after reading a biography about him ever. That that is like very Alfred Hitchcock. And I thought that was very cool. So that would have been something I would have actually liked to have been at, but I couldn't be. So that's one of my favorite almost cigar stories. Very cool. Is this one still there? Yeah. This one's right there. I don't know if he can hear he us. He can't hear he us. He can't hear us? Okay. We can he talk. Can oh, we can talk about him. Uh, there is a fan asking uh, what he was smoking in the, in the comment section. He says, Usman, what are you smoking today? Do we remember what Usman smoking? Kildur K- say 50. Pedro say 50. There you go. Uh, smooth. Now we can hear you. Yes, Thank you very much. Finally, is finally free, we can hear creamy, you. smooth cigar. We can hear you. So this is a, this is a nope. build up to another cigar. This is the build up to another cigar. I would be smoking a little later at a dinner, uh, which is also going to be a Kedor say, most likely. But let's see how it goes. Uh, if you guys can hear me, let me know, and I can share a short. I th- I th- I think the creator of the universe yes. has decided that every single time Usman starts his cigar story, that the Wi-Fi can hear. So, I suggest we save his cigar story for the next episode. I ag- I agree with that. I think that would be smart because it'll just disappoint us. But we get to look at the beautiful car and Usman. So there you go. So Very good. And, and, Usman, very and good. Usman's little collection of figures there. And his I ash, know. which came from here a few months ago. Does now, does Christian have a cigar story? Other than he's smoking with the four of us, does he have one? He seems to have uh, one. Go for it. I can go for it. So there is always okay. a story for, for cigar. So I give you my personal story. Okay, so that's basically everything started when I moved in London back on 2004, and uh, slightly after I started to work in one of the probably one of the best cocktail bar as an old-fashioned style at the Lansbury Hotel, and that's back on the time you could smoke cigar inside. And so my history back on cigars in Italy, it was just only Toscanello. My father used to smoke a few of them, but I never went into this type of uh, uh, type of cigars and things. So when I was working there, people that were smoking indoor, nice Cuban Davidoff and a small selection of other Cuban cigars. So back on 2007, when we opened this garden outside, that's where I started to smoke some cigars. 
but unfortunately he had a bad direction for one guy which he was just started to smoke and he offered to me a Maduro Mexicos which is the dark wrapper very heavy smoke so I smoked that cigar early afternoon with an empty stomach and man, <laughs> I was also inhaling some puff I pretty much got sick and I was like oh my god cigar are not for me I think I'm gonna it's not gonna be my way and then week after I met another gentleman, we sit down, we talk about Cuban cigar, I start to fall in love with it, I smoke a nice oil, which was much lighter, I really enjoyed it, and from there, all the passion started, and from there, I fell in love with uh, all the buns. That's my yeah. little story. That's your little, that is a great story, that's a very, that's a very good story. You, gotta, you, you know, when you first smoke cigars, and I don't think people realize this, if you're trying them on your own, it's fine. But it's really good to have a bunch of mates or go to a real uh, place where they know them. Not just every cigar store has a guy that has a clue that can really pair you up with the right cigar. So you don't do the Technicolor yawn, um, you know, because that's embarrassing. Stephen, so, have you ever got sick smoking a cigar? Oh, yeah. Because uh, I, I was stupid. I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, everybody I think has, right? I, I didn't eat enough or I didn't have enough to drink with not alcohol, but something with sugar in it because sugar will counteract it. Like if you're starting to feel sick and you don't, and you don't have um, food or anything, or if you're drinking, whether it's scotch or you're drinking cranberry juice or whatever it is, and you're feeling sick, you can get a couple packets of sugar and put those, you know, take them really quick. And that'll take care of the sickness for, to an extent, to another extent, sometimes it's too late. And then you do the technicolor yawn and you're done. You know, you feel better two hours later. And uh, um, I got sick once. I got sick once. Mm. And I can even tell you which cigar it was. I went through, and Usman was, uh, when I met Usman, I was going through the Camacho phase. Uh, uh, okay. Cigar, and oh, shit. I was smoking oh, Camachos shit. left, right, and center. And then I tried the Blue Bandit Camacho, which is called the Camacho Ecuador. And right. um, that basically was like putting a gun to my head and pulling the trigger. Uh, oh, wow. That one took me out big time. But the problem with getting sick over cigars, and, I, and I've seen, I have a very good friend uh, who, who kind of winces when I mention cigars because he often gets sick, um, is that when you get sick smoking a cigar, it's often a bit too late to do anything about it. Uh, you've already gone past the point of no return. You can stop smoking, and yet you will get sick. Um, so one of the cigar tricks that um, I've heard from various different people is to keep chocolate, um, uh, sort of full-fat chocolate next to you. Yes. Yeah, uh, if you're a new cigar smoker, have a few pieces of chocolate even before you smoke a cigar, or whilst during, uh, during smoking a cigar, yeah. and it should keep you going for a little while longer. Um, is that, that sh- once again, the sugar, uh, yeah. I try to eat like before the show, what I end up doing is like this morning I had steak and eggs and oh, wow. some bread. So that's yeah, like I, for, every, every, for breakfast. Every, yeah, every Wednesday I have like the breakfast of cigar champions, um, because there's no way I, the cigars I smoke oh, wow. are all full body. There's no way that I could just smoke a cigar and go, Hey, I'm here. I would be technicolor yawning. So I make sure that I smoke a full I love body. That. Technicolor yawning. Yawn. I've never heard that before. That's a good one. Yeah, the technicolor yawn. Yeah, it's an Olympic, it's an Olympic event when you get sick. But you what I do is I make sure I, I, that kind of Yeah, thing. yeah. Oh, it's yeah, it's a great. So I just make sure I have a big breakfast and then um, which is funny, then I have a cup of Milo, which is um, from Indonesia. It's it's like uh, hot chocolate. And then I have my scotch and I bring out my cranberry juice. And that's what I make sure that I don't get sick. Now, if I'm out and I don't have dinner, I will make sure that I get like a candy bar and I'll eat the candy bar before I smoke my cigar. If I can't have dinner. Excellent. So, yeah, yeah, you got you to gotta know the tricks of the trade. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun hobby, but if you do it wrong, not so much. Actually, you know what? I have a feeling that in this show, even though it's been a, a relatively shorter show in comparison, yes. we've, actually, we've actually exchanged quite a few decent tips Including yes. me, um, this has been an informative show as opposed to shooting the breeze, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, 
uh, Usman Ali. The core reason, the core reason for this has the the core reason for this has been that you were serious today. Thank you. And I, taking I, over I, I tried. the the the. the, the <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no the, reason the, past, the, the reason I was serious. The reason I was serious. That was the no, 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 no. The the reason the reason for that is the right kind of influence, which is sitting right next to you. That's right. That you're, you're, That's right. <laughs> so so we need to we need to ensure that Christian is always around you to make you serious. Well, Christian is around all the time anyway. So yeah. well, no, it was a good show. Um, the aliens are here, so I had to come inside quickly. Understood. But anyway, my cigar is uh, is excellent. I'll finish it when they're done. You guys, how is your cigars? And then we're going to say cigar, goodbye until it's, next week. It's really getting cigar. a bit strong. Okay. All right. And Usman and is Usman again is is bye bye. Usman's out. All right. No, no, I, I'm here. I'm very much here, Raza. Yes, sir. Quick question. Since you're smoking a Lineada, have you have you smoked a Monte Cristo 80th? And if you have, can you compare both of these? Because a Monte Cristo it's been said what? that both of them are kind of have 80th I? anniversary. I I haven't. Uh, Christian <laughs> these days okay, knows exactly you. what I smoke. I haven't smoked it. I smoke a cigar, and I've gone to the Cuban level. It's either good or it's bad. But I don't recall smoking that. I guess now that you've mentioned it, putting Christians here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to end up smoking that. How yeah. can a cigar nowadays? With, with yeah. where it is the same Vitola of the Leyenda came out on 215. I feel, in my yeah. opinion, I exactly. it's much, much milder and smoother. It's not that heavy as the Leyenda. This is okay. a heavy okay. cigar. This is a heavy, it's from the outset, it's been flavorsome and cedary. Um, and I can tell it's getting heavy, right. Okay. And my okay. cigar was just okay. isn't just a for for full body cigar. It's just a mild smoke all the way through. It's wonderful. Sometimes so. that's exactly what no, you no. need. In, yeah. In, uh, for me, your, it is because then again, you know, a hundred of them. In your case, smoking. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, you're gone. You're gone again. <laughs> hey, Mr. Host, what are we going to talk about next? What do you want to talk about next week? Well, so the fans know. What we'll, do, what we'll do is we will. Start off with Usman's cigar story, and we'll meander. Okay. Out. Let Let me come up with a structured discussion. Ooh, today. that'll be exciting! I like that. It's a good to see you as always, my friend. And thank Christian once okay. again. Christian, thank you. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Enjoy. We'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Don't forget, live every Wednesday. We broadcasting on every Saturday, so you guys can get the best of the best. We'll see you guys all soon. Cheers, everybody. <laughs>